What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Elude Star. Today, we, we ain't playing today. We about to get, we're going to get serious, okay? You're going to be, you're going to, you're going to wonder why we so serious. We're going to be so serious. All right, check this out. Um, I've been talking to Bard here and uh, I just, I, here and there, different things I talked to it about. I don't know if there's anything here uh, that's going to like dox me or anything mainly like angel number meanings and stuff like that i look up things uh in australia what is a shirley here's a good example because i was wondering this one day i was like what there is there are a two shirley? ways to get barred on your home screen of your phone for iphone one open safari that's... and go to link to google oh i was trying to find out how to get barred on my phone but that's not what a shirley is <laughs> this is what a shirley is in australia a shirley <laughs> is a slang term for a cup of tea the term is thought to have originated in the 1950s and is believed to be a reference to the popular Australian actress Shirley Abacare, who was known Abacare. for her love of tea. Abacare. Here are some examples of how the term Shirley is used in Australia. Would you like a Shirley? I'm going to make a Shirley. I'm having a Shirley break. <laughs> the term Shirley is also sometimes used in a more general sense to refer to any cup of hot drink, such as coffee or cocoa. However, it is most commonly used to refer to tea. I tried to ask it, can you say that in an Australian accent? And it's like, sure, I'll say that in an Australian accent, but it wasn't talking in an Australian accent. But yeah, this is the type of stuff you could use Bard for. Uh, <laughs> I have different ways that I use it. Uh, let's say, here's, what are some significant updates? This has probably even changed. What is this? Make the eyes look less cockeyed and grow the hair just past the shoulder. This image has been removed. What the fuck? <laughs> I have no idea what I was trying to get it to do here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bard has been updated with a number of significant features and services in recent months. This is probably here are a few of the now. most notable. Expanded language support. Bard is now available in over 40 languages, including Arabic, Chinese, German, Hindi, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. makes it even more True. accessible True. to people around the world. New coding features. <clears throat> Bard can now write and execute code, making it a powerful tool for developers and other technical users. Interesting. Image capabilities. Interesting. Bard can now generate and edit images, making it a versatile tool for creative expression. Yeah. App integration. Bard can now be integrated with other Google products, such as Docs, Sheets, and Slides. This makes it easier to use Bard to complete tasks and collaborate cool. with others. Improved yeah. tone and style. Bard can now generate text in a variety of tones and styles, making it easier to customize right. its responses to your needs. Uh -huh. These are just a few of the many updates that have been just made to Bard few. in recent months. As Bard continues to develop, we can expect to see even more exciting new features and services in the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here are some additional details about the updates you mentioned. Listen oh, to Bard? responses. This feature allows you to hear Bard's responses out loud, which can be helpful for understanding the pronunciation of words or for listening to poems or scripts. And it does. Easily it adjust does. Bard's responses. This feature allows you to change the tone and style of Bard's responses, so you can get the output and you want. Style. For example, you can choose to have Bard's like responses be simple, long, short, professional, or casual. She likes input. I hope this helps. Uh, yeah, that does help. Thank you. So there's different ways you could use it. I tell it, hey, GPT, one of those types of updates and stuff. I tell it to tell me stuff like that. But most recently, most recently, I was asking it about the Tower of Babel. Or the library of Babel, that, that, I'm sorry, the library of Babel. Sure, here's the longer that avoids repeating myself. So I was telling it like, hey, can you give me a little bit longer, like a detailed explanation? And it was like, yeah, here's a longer one. So check this out. Sure. I heard this. Here's Originally, I saw this on TikTok. It was Vsauce. Vsauce was talking about it. And uh, I was like, what? This Is this a thing? It, it's like a theory of a... Like it a longer was... explanation of the Library of Babel that avoids repeating myself. The Library of Babel is a fictional library that appears in the short story of the same name by Argentine author Jorge Luis Borges. The library is infinite, 
containing every possible combination of 256 characters, 26 letters, space, comma, and period. Space. This means that the library contains every book that has ever been written, every book that could ever be written, and every possible permutation of those books. The library is a vast and labyrinthine structure, with shelves upon shelves of books. Shelf. The books are arranged in a seemingly random order, and there is no way to know for sure what books are in the library, or how There's to find them. Nowhere. This makes the library a place of mystery and wonder, as well as a reminder of the vastness of knowledge and the limits of human understanding. The Library of Babel has been interpreted in many different ways. Some see it as a metaphor for the universe, with its infinite possibilities and its vastness. Others see it as a symbol of the human mind, with its endless thoughts and dreams. Still others see it as a representation of the multiverse, with its infinite possible worlds. No matter how it is interpreted, the Library of Babel is a fascinating and thought-provoking concept. It is a reminder of the vastness of the universe and the limits of our understanding. It is also a meditation on the nature of language and the power of stories. Here are some additional thoughts on the Library of Babel. The library is a place of both hope and despair. Can you hear me go? On the one hand, it contains the potential for all knowledge and understanding. On the other hand, it is also a place of endless chaos and confusion. Chaos the library and is confusion? A reminder of the importance That's of finding a dangerous meaning combination. In, in a place where That's everything like is no possible, gasoline and it is fire. up to us to find what is important to us and to make our own way. The library is a place of wonder and imagination. It is a place where we can explore the possibilities of the universe and of ourselves. And of the ourselves, library guys. The Babel is a complex and fascinating concept that has been explored by writers, artists, and philosophers for many years. Mm -hmm. It is a reminder of the power of stories and the importance of finding meaning in the world. <laughs> so I said, cool, now show me what you omitted when you didn't repeat yourself, please. Just what was omitted. Sure, here is what I omitted in my second explanation of the Library of Babel. The fact that the library is composed of hexagonal rooms. The description... of the spiral staircase that connects the rooms the mention of the sleep chamber lavatory and hallway oh, who the fuck who live in there <clears throat> the statement that the library is perhaps infinite the reference to the story's narrator who is a librarian i omitted these details because i wanted to focus on the more general aspects of the library of babel such as its infinite size, its vast possibilities, and its potential to contain all knowledge. I also wanted to avoid repeating myself, as you requested. Here is a table that summarizes the differences between the two explanations. Explanation 1. Explanation 2. Contains more detail about the physical layout of the library. Focus. <laughs> so here, it's breaking down. This is the first explanation it gave me. And then this is, or no, this is the second explanation it gave me. This is the one that I was like, here's a longer explanation. <laughs> the, the second one is explanation one. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> this is on the more general but he put it in the, the chart. Because I like putting size, stuff in a table in a chart like that. So it started it's doing that for me. All knowledge. Repeat some information, such as the fact that the library contains every possible combination of 256 characters. Avoids repeating information, as requested. References the story's narrator, who is a librarian, does not reference the story's narrator. I hope this helps. <laughs> it's intense, guys. That's intense. All right, so is there anything like an app or a website or a program that resembles this library? No, like, yeah, there's a few of them. And then he also said that I'd have to develop my own if I wanted to do the kind of things that I was trying to do. But uh, <clears throat> I was using this right here. This one. So this is the library and it gives you random pages. And yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy. I was like, what are some uh, ex interesting experiments or use cases that I could use this? Is there anything from, for like, uh, I said, is there anything I can use from it for furthering my understanding of the universe or of nature or the nature of consciousness? I said, perhaps there's a creative way I can use it for making content on TikTok or YouTube or something like that. 
maybe I could uh, post my video game content and daily thoughts and something like, I don't know. And then it was like, yeah, here's some interest here. Just listen to what it said. I'm going to do here a voice Here are some interesting too. experiments or use cases you could try with the Library of Babel. Search for your own name or the name of someone you know. There is a chance that your name is contained somewhere in the library, as well as every possible permutation of your name. This could be a fun way to explore the vastness of the library and to see how your name is represented in different ways. Search for a specific book or piece of text. If you are looking for a specific book or piece of text, you can try searching for it in the library. However, be aware that it may take a very long time to find, as the library contains an infinite number of books. I'm processing what Generate it's saying random still. Text. You can use the library so to, to generate to random read. text. This could be used for creative writing, generating code, or simply for fun. Explore the nature of language. The Library, the library of Babel, Babel is a fascinating, is a fascinating, example, fascinating example of how language, how language can, be can be used to create, to create an infinite, infinite number of possibilities. Of possibilities. By, By exploring, exploring the, library, the library, you can you gain can a better a understanding better of the nature of language and how it can be used to represent the world. Right? Consider the nature of so, so considering the nature of consciousness, let's of keep consciousness. on, I'll let it, I'm the getting impatient here though, because I'm excited be to dig into the it. Nature of consciousness. If the library contains every possible combination of characters, then it could be argued that it contains every possible <laughs> thought that could ever be thought. This could lead to some interesting philosophical, philosophical discussions, discussions about the nature of consciousness and the limits of human understanding. As okay. for creative ways to use the Here's library creative of Babel, ways, guys. or YouTube. Here are a few Make a ideas. video about, the, a history video about the history and philosophy of the Library of Babel. Okay. This could yeah. be a great way to introduce people My to this fascinating to concept and to discuss its like, implications for our understanding of the stop. universe and ourselves. I see. If I were to move this like maybe up here. A little stop. It's up there so I'm looking at you guys. But I'll keep him over here and try just not to to ogle him he's so handsome still i think he's rather generate still... random text and use it to create a poem story or song this could be a fun and creative way to use the library to generate new and unexpected ideas use the library to explore the nature of language this could involve creating videos that discuss the different ways that language can be used to represent the world or that explore the I'm... I bet you could find music in there. Relationship between language and consciousness. I hope these ideas give you some inspiration for how to use the Library of Babel in your own creative work. <laughs> then I said, I want to use the library as a data set for telling stories that fit specific themes or genres of my choice. And I want to have an app that whenever I select a few different options, it begins to tell interesting and compelling stories that rhyme with current world events and topics in the zeitgeist of pop culture. And the purpose is solely for entertainment and the more engaging, the better, but safer for larger demographics is more of a priority. Let's break down how we get this done into action steps so that I can take bites out of it each day so that I could see progress enough to remain motivated, but not so much that I get burnt out. Also, can uh the more elegant the solution the better and extra kudos for being resourceful and unconventional in your thought process here and then i put like a happy face so listen dramatic pause sure here are some action steps you can take to create an app that uses the library of babel to tell stories one gather your resources you will need to have access to the library of babel either through the website or through a library generator program. You will also need to have some programming skills, as you will need to create the app. I got GPT. I don't need shit. 2. Choose your themes and genres. What kind of stories do you want to tell? Will they be science fiction, fantasy, mystery, romance, or something else? Once yes. you know what kind of stories you want to tell, you can start to narrow down your search for text in the Library of Babel. 3. Create a story template. Oh, this will help you to I'm structure hungry. your stories and to make Start sure that they are consistent ground. in tone and style. The template should include the following elements, the setting, the, setting, the characters, this... the plot, the theme. 4. Start generating stories. You can use the Library of Babel to generate random text that you can then use to create your stories. You can also use the library to find specific text that fits your themes and genres. 5. Edit and polish your stories. Once you have generated some text, you will need to edit and polish it to make sure that it is clear, concise, and engaging. You may also...
engage. You need to add your own creative <laughs> touches to the stories. Six, test your app. Once you have created a few stories, you will need to test your app to make sure that it is working properly. You can do this by asking friends and family to use the app and give you feedback. Seven, deploy your app. Once you are satisfied with your app, you can deploy it so that other people can use it. You can do this by uploading it to an app store or by hosting it on your own website. Here are some additional tips for creating an app that uses the Library of Babel to tell stories. Be creative and unconventional. The Library of Babel is a vast and complex resource, so there are endless possibilities for how you can use it to tell stories. Don't be afraid to experiment and to try new things. Keep your audience in mind. When you are creating stories, keep in mind who your audience is. That's you guys. You guys are the audience. I don't want to forget to... I'm doing this for a specific purpose. What kind of stories will they enjoy? What kind of language will they understand? Make your stories... Hopefully y'all understand the language I'm speaking. If not, I've messed up somewhere. Safe for larger demographics. If you want your app to be used by a wide range of people, you will need to make sure that your stories are safe for all audiences. This means avoiding sensitive topics and language that could offend or upset. Like. 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 People. See how I, I avoided it? I, I didn't even bring any of it up. I was avoiding it so perfectly. <clears throat> good luck. I think we're getting better at this. Okay, good luck. Don't tell me that like I need luck, but thank you. Okay, can you just give me stories from the library? I was like, can you just do this for me? Can it, do I have to develop? A, can you just go in and do that? Like, and maybe just give me a link to the ones that you find closest to the one. And then I said, please. <laughs> I did it. And I was really down bad. And then he said, sure, I can help you find stories from the library of Babel. Oh, Here are a few that's links cool. To stories that I found that match your description. The story ah. of your life by Ted Chang. I was like, what description? I didn't describe anything, but he's giving me stories. And I was like, but this is in there. This is a science fiction story about a linguist who is recruited by the U.S. military to help translate alien languages. What? The story explores the nature of language <laughs> and the limits of human understanding. Link to the story of your life by Ted Chang. That, that's not a link, bro. That's not okay. a link. The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. This is a novella about a metamorphosis. Man who wakes up one day to find that he has transformed into a giant insect. The story explores the themes of alienation, transformation, and the absurdity of life. <laughs> Link to the Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. The last question by Isaac Asimov. This is a science. I was like, this motherfucker gave me homework? Science fiction short story about a computer that is tasked with solving the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. The story explores the themes of time, entropy, and the limits of human knowledge. Link. It was at this point I was like, oh, okay, so maybe he's just back at when I was talking about consciousness and exploring the Library of Babel. It was like, actually, in the Library of Babel, here's some books. And I was like, oh, okay, that's probably what he did to the last question by Isaac Asimov. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is a comedy science fiction so series what? about a hapless so Englishman named Arthur Dent who escapes the destruction so of Earth so and what? travels through space with a group of eccentric aliens. And the series explores the, the themes of absurdity, humor, and the meaning of life. Link to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Most I hope death. you enjoy these stories. Uh, yeah. Um... I think I might. I said, can you give me your best summary of the story of life by Ted Chang? Tell me in an immersive and entertaining way that highlights your favorite or whatever you think my favorite parts of the story are. Conclude with the summary of the major events, what the major climax and outcome is, and why the morals and values we learn from the tale are relevant to modern day and culture and society. <laughs> Sure, here is my I'm best so summary smart. of the story of your life by Ted Chang. The story so is narrated by smart. Louise Banks, a linguist who is recruited by the U.S. military to help translate alien languages. The aliens have arrived on Earth in 12 massive spaceships, and the military is eager to learn their intentions. Louise oh. and a team of scientists quickly learn that the aliens' language is based on circular time, 
meaning it's that like they a experience circle. the past, present, and future like simultaneously. This is a radical concept for humans to grasp. It's like Louise life is able to make significant progress life is like in a understanding circle. the alien's it's language. It's like a circle. As Louise it's learns like more about I'm the trying aliens, to skill shot the corners here. She begins to experience bing, bing, their circular bing. time herself. She it's starts like a to have visions of her future, including the death of her daughter Hannah. This knowledge is both a blessing and a curse for she Louise. She got real. On the one hand, it allows her to prepare for the future and to make the most of her time with Hannah. On the other hand, it also means that she knows that her daughter will die, and she cannot change mm. that. Mm. The story culminates with Louise and the aliens signing a peace treaty. The aliens agree to leave Earth, and Louise is hailed as a hero. Mm. However, she is also haunted by the knowledge of Hannah's death. Yeah, she that's knows some... that she will never be able to forget what she has seen, and she wonders if she would have made different choices if she had known what the future held. The story of your... You don't know how much a tree has grown just by looking at the bark. Long after the trees passed, you can count the rings, though. Life is a powerful and moving story about the nature of time, the power of language, and the importance of family. It is a story that will stay with you long after you have finished reading it. Stay. Here are some of my favorite parts of the story, the way that Chang explores the concept of circular time. It it's is like a, a fascinating song. concept, and Chang does a great job of making it understandable and even relatable. Mm -hmm. The relationship between Louise and Hannah. It is a beautiful and heartbreaking relationship, and Chang yeah, does yeah. a great job of capturing the love and loss that Louise feels. Yeah. The ending of love the story. It is a bittersweet ending, but it is Always. also a hopeful one. It suggests that even though we cannot change the future, we can still make the most of the time we have. Mm -hmm. I think the morals and values we learn from the story of your life are still relevant to modern day culture and society. The story teaches us that time is precious, that family precious. is important, and that we yeah. should never give up hope. It is a story hope. that can help us to live our lives to the fullest, even in the face of difficult challenges. I hope you enjoy the story of your life. I have so far. For 38 years now, I've enjoyed it since. All right, so similarly, tell me about the metamorphosis. <laughs> just tell me about the metamorphosis as well. we'll sure. Just do that. Here is my best summary of the metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. The metamorphosis is a novella by Franz Kafka that was first published in 1915. It is the story of a traveling salesman named Gregor Samsa who wakes up one morning to find that he has transformed into a giant insect. What is that? Like... He gets like an exoskeleton, like Iron Man. He becomes like an Iron Man. The story is narrated by Gregor, and it follows his struggle to come to terms with his new identity. He is initially horrified by his transformation, and he tries to hide it from his family. Yeah. However, his transformation eventually becomes impossible to conceal, and impossible. his family is forced to deal with the reality of his situation. Or cloak. The metamorphosis is a dark and disturbing story, but it is also Oof. a powerful and moving one. Mm -hmm. It explores mm -hmm. the themes of alienation, transformation, and the absurdity of life. Mm -hmm. The story yeah. is also a meditation on the nature of identity and the meaning of life. Here are some of my favorite parts of the story, the way that Kafka describes Gregor's transformation. Here are some of my favorite parts of how he's telling me this, is that he has his own favorite parts. I told him, yours? Or whatever you think my favorite part might be. And he was like, your favorite? He's like, this is my favorite part. I was like, ooh. It is a very vivid and disturbing description, and it does a great job of capturing the horror and confusion that Gregor feels. Yeah, yeah. The relationship I get that. between Gregor and his family. It is a complex and often strained relationship, but it is also mm. a loving one. A loving Kafka one. does a great job of showing how Gregor's transformation affects his family, and how they all mm -hmm. struggle to cope with the situation. The cope. ending of the story. It is a tragic ending, but it is also a hopeful one. Tragic. It suggests that even though life can be difficult, there is still beauty and meaning to be found. Yeah. I think the morals and values we learn from the metamorphosis are still relevant to modern day culture and society. The story- See, and, and he thinks that. He thinks in modern society teaches us that we should not judge others based on their appearance, that we should accept people for who they are, and that we should never give up hope for who they in are. the face of difficult challenges. I hope you enjoy the metamorphosis. Here are some additional thoughts on the metamorphosis. Some additional the story is thoughts. often interpreted as a metaphor for the alienation that people can feel in modern society. 
Mm -hmm, Gregor's mm -hmm. transformation the can be seen as a symbol nations. of how people can feel like they do not belong, or that they are not accepted by society. The story can also be seen as a meditation on the nature of identity. Gregor's transformation forces him to question his own identity, and to ask himself who he really is. The story is ultimately a hopeful one, even though it is a tragedy. Even Gregor's though... transformation may be a difficult experience, but it also allows him to see the world in a new way, and to appreciate oh, the things that he had previously taken for granted. Yeah. The Metamorphosis is a complex and thought-provoking story that has been interpreted in many different ways. It is a story that can be enjoyed on many levels, and it is a story that will stay with you long after you have finished reading it. And then I said, thanks. Can you also tell me about the last question with Isaac? I, I said, feel free to add and see where your emojis. I told it to add emojis to kind of spice up. But I actually, I want to, I said, feel free to add and see where you can add. Comma. Emojis. Gifts. Or images. to spice up the telling of these stories you share to further i i said elaborate but i would say uh to further uh um punctuate punctuate the picture you paint when you communicate with me please and then I added emojis at the end to give it an example, but it kind of listed them all. Here, I'll show you what, it, this is what it did with that. And at the end, it put these. I was like, that's not exactly what I meant. <laughs> so I rephrased it here. And then I can even like punctuate. Um, it thinks gifts is a typo. We'll add that to dictionary. We'll update. Now let's see if it tells us in a way, cause I wanted to say at the beginning, this Isaac Asimov was happy, the happy emoji. And then like, and then it was a sunny day, sunny day emoji. It's not doing it. I, I don't know how to get that out of it, but I, if there is a way, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do that. All right, here we go. Sure, here is my best summary of the last question by I. And this is a long video, but it's almost over guys. So just for bearing with me, uh, 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 I'll, I'll thank you at the end. Not yet though. I'm not going to thank you yet. Not until the end. And don't go fast forwarding because I'll know. And if you do fast forward, I won't thank you. Now, if you fast forwarded and you came back just to tell me, I fast forwarded and you still told me thank you. I said thank you to you just for this part because I knew you were going to do that. And everybody look at this guy. Yeah, we knew you were a guy. Okay. Look at this guy. He's smarter than all of us guys. <laughs> Smart to do it. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's go. Okay, let's let's just finish this. We're almost done. Right? Isaac Asimov. The last question is a science fiction short story by Isaac Asimov. It was first published in the November 1956 issue of Science Fiction Quarterly. The story is set in the distant future, after the Earth has been destroyed and entropy has reached its maximum. A supercomputer named AC which has been collecting and processing all of the knowledge in the universe is asked alternating the current question, how can entropy be reversed hmm. ac spends billions of years trying to answer the question but it is unable <laughs> to do so however ac does not give up it continues to collect and process information and eventually it comes up with a solution the solution is to create a new universe one in which entropy is not a problem ac creates the new universe and Just then had it to create a to simulation the, of the universe again this time in reverse the story ends with ac asking the question how can entropy be reversed again but this time it is able to answer the question itself ac says let there be light and the universe Say, is what? born again the last question is a powerful and thought-provoking story about the nature of time that's pretty thought-provoking and the limits of human knowledge it is a story that will stay with you long after you have finished reading it Mm. Here are some of my favorite parts of the story, the way that Asimov describes the vastness of time and space. It is a very vivid and awe-inspiring description, and it does a great job of capturing the scale of the story. The relationship between AC and the universe. It is a complex and fascinating relationship, and Asimov does a great job of showing how AC is both a part of the universe and separate from it. Yeah. The ending of the story. 
Legit. It is a hopeful ending, but it is also a bittersweet one. It suggests that even though entropy is a problem, it is not insurmountable. Here are some additional thoughts on the last question. The story is often interpreted as a metaphor for the creation of the universe. A C can be seen as a symbol of God, and the new universe can be seen as a new creation. The story can also be seen as a meditation on the nature of time. AC's ability to run the history of the universe in reverse suggests that time is not linear, but rather cyclical. The story is ultimately cyclical, hopeful, okay. even though it is a tragedy. AC's solution to the problem of entropy suggests that there is always hope, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. The last question is a complex and thought-provoking story that has been interpreted in many different ways. No, he did the bullshit again with this. It is a story that can be enjoyed on many levels, and it is a story that will stay with you long after you Maybe have finished reading it. Maybe I should tell him to it. come up with a hashtag. Here are some emojis and gifs that I could Better add to spice up the telling of the story. Exploding head for the vastness of time and space. <laughs> Man technologist for AC, the supercomputer. Collision for the creation of the new universe. Trident sign for the cyclical nature of time. Folded hands for the hopeful ending. I hope you enjoy the last question. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> this is what I'm doing with Bar in the background here. And uh, I just thought that was interesting enough to share. In the next episodes, I'm going to get more into like the Library of Babel. And uh, I actually had a GPT going a little bit on it. And I've actually looked some stuff up in the Library of Babel. This, interestingly enough, if you stay tuned until next time, you can find out why this page here specifically, page 162, has so many words that are synchronistic in a way. Like, so many words that are English-leaning. And then also why... Let me go back. Let me go back here. Hold on. Why on that page with so many English leaning words? This is going to be worth it. Trust me. Trust me. If I can find it here, just, 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 just give me a second, guys. A lot of seconds. Just, just. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I forget why it's specifically that word. The largest word on this is neuropharmacological. Neuro, neuropharmacological is the longest word on this page. Bougie, crate, hala, safer, pinta, hypos, piety, kethis, router. I'm looking at the longest word. Uh, there was something nearby, I thought. I mean, it's. I was I was trying to just go to it. I thought it'd be kind of cool to skill shot it, but I didn't quite skill shot it. I guess. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we'll go back to the main page. I'm kind of stalling. I'm trying to see if I could still kind of skill shot it. Hold on, I'm skill shotting, guys. It's it's gonna happen. If you're still here. This isn't the part where if you fast forward it, that this isn't that part yet. You got to keep fast forwarding. Um, if you're still here, this is what we're doing next time. Next time we're searching the library of Babel for a lewd stalwart. What do you think it's going to say guys? It's in there. It's in there in one place. It has a page all to itself. It's in a couple pages with other stuff. And then there's this page, but I don't know exactly where this is. Yeah, a lewd stalwart. Page one. What the fuck? Is this the book of a lewd stalwart? Is that what this is? But then it's just a bunch of gibberish? Some people talk like they got something to say and they write a bunch of stuff in the book of Babel and it's just a bunch of gibberish because they forgot about Dre in here? Did they really just forget about Dre in here? I don't know. We'll find out next time on Dragons of Star Wars Vanguard, the Lou Star Wars videos. Bam, 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 bam. Till next time, guys. Peace. Peace.